Welcome to Brainish English Stories. When someone really loves what they do, they're willing to work very hard for it. That's what we believe. This story will prove it and also show that sometimes this belief is not true. This idea is a bit like a puzzle, and storytelling about it goes way back. Joe Larrabee grew up in the flatlands of the Middle West, and he was very good at making pictures. When he was only six years old, he drew a picture of a town pump with an important person walking quickly past it. People liked it so much that they put it in a frame and displayed it in the window of a drugstore next to an ear of corn that had an odd number of rows. When he turned 20, Joe left for New York with a fancy tie and some money saved up. Delia Carruthers was a talented singer from a small village in the South. She was so good that her family collected enough money in a hat to send her up north to improve her skills. They couldn't hear her sing, but that's part of our story. Joe and Delia met at a place where art and music students gathered to talk about fancy things like shadows in art, music by Wagner, famous paintings, and other artsy topics. Joe and Delia fell in love with each other quickly and got married because, as we said before, when you really love what you do, you're willing to work hard for it. Mr. and Mrs. Larrabee started their life together in a small apartment. It was a bit lonely, like a piano key far away on the left side. But they were happy because they had their art and each other. If I were to give advice to a rich young person, I'd say, sell everything you have and live in an apartment with your art and your loved one. People who live in apartments will agree with me that it's the best way to be happy. If your home is happy, it doesn't matter if it's small. Let the furniture change into different things like a dresser turning into a billiards table or a mantle becoming a rowing machine. Even the walls can move closer as long as you and your loved one are together. But if your home is not a happy one, then it should be big and spacious like crossing through different parts of the world. Joe was taking painting lessons from a famous teacher, and Delia was learning from a piano teacher. They were very happy as long as they had money. This happens to everyone, but I won't be negative about it. They had clear goals. Joe wanted to become a famous painter, so good that rich old men with thin beards and big wallets would fight to buy his paintings. Delia aimed to master music and then be uninterested in it, so that when she saw unsold seats at concerts, she could pretend to have a sore throat and dine alone, refusing to perform. But the best part, in my opinion, was their life together in the small apartment. They had passionate talks after their studies, cozy dinners, and simple breakfasts. They shared their dreams and helped each other. And, forgive my simplicity, they enjoyed stuffed olives and cheese sandwiches at 11 p.m. However, their passion for art started to fade. It happens sometimes, even if no one warns you. They were spending more money on their teachers, Mr. Magister and her Rosenstock, than they were making. But when you really love what you do, you'll do anything for it. So, Delia decided to give music lessons to keep the money flowing. She went out to find students for a few days. One evening, she came home excited. Joe, honey, she said happily, I have a student. And, oh, such lovely people. General A. B. Pinkney's daughter on 71st Street. Their house is amazing, Joe. 
You should see the front door. It's like something from ancient times. And inside. Oh, Joe, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. My student is Clementina, the general's daughter. I already adore her. She's a delicate girl, always wearing white, and she's so polite. She's only 18. I'll be teaching her three times a week, and guess what, Joe? She'll pay five dollars for each lesson. I don't mind at all, because once I get a few more students, I can resume my lessons with her Rosenstock. Now, stop worrying, dear, and let's have a nice dinner. That's fine for you, Delia, Joe said, attacking a can of peas with a carving knife, but what about me? Do you think I'll let you work while I pursue high art? No way! I can sell newspapers or do some other job to bring in a few dollars. Delia came over and hugged him. Joe, darling, you're being silly. You should continue your studies. It's not like I've given up music for something else. While I teach, I learn. I'm always connected to my music. And we can live happily on $15 a week, like millionaires. You shouldn't even consider leaving Mr. Magister. All right, Joe agreed, reaching for the dish with vegetables, but I don't like the idea of you giving lessons. It's not really art. But you're wonderful and dear for doing it. When you really love what you do, no task seems too difficult, Delia said. Mr. Magister liked the sky in that drawing I made at the park, Joe mentioned. And Tinkle allowed me to display two of them in his shop window. Maybe I can sell one if the right wealthy person notices them. I'm sure you can, Delia replied, kindly. Now, let's be thankful for General Pinkney for his job offer. For the entire next week, the Larrabees had breakfast early. Joe was excited about some sketches he was creating in Central Park during the morning hours, and Delia prepared him breakfast, gave him encouragement, and kissed him goodbye at seven o'clock. Art is a captivating passion, and he often didn't return until seven o'clock in the evening. At the end of the week, Delia, sweetly proud but a bit tired, proudly placed three five-dollar bills on the small table in the small living room of their small apartment. Sometimes, she said with a hint of tiredness, Clementina can be challenging. I'm afraid she doesn't practice enough, and I have to repeat the same instructions. And she always wears white, which can become monotonous. But General Pinkney is such a kind man. I wish you could meet him, Joe. Sometimes he comes in while I'm teaching Clementina at the piano. He's a widower, you know, and he stands there, stroking his white beard. And how is Clementina doing with her music? He always asks. I wish you could see the fancy wall paneling in their drawing room, Joe. And those elegant rug curtains. Clementina has a peculiar little cough. I hope she's stronger than she appears. I'm actually growing fond of her. She's so beautiful and disciplined. General Pinkney's brother was once an ambassador to Bolivia. Then Joe, looking like a triumphant hero, took out a ten-dollar bill, a five, a two, and a one, all real money, and placed them next to Delia's earnings. I sold that watercolor painting of a monument to a man from Peoria, he announced with enthusiasm. Don't tease me, Delia said, not someone from Peoria. 
from all the way in Peoria. I wish you could see him, Delia. He's a chubby man. At first, he thought the sketch was of a windmill, but he was determined and bought it anyway. He even ordered another one, an oil sketch of the Lackawanna Freight Depot, to take back with him. Music lessons. I guess art still has its place. I'm so glad you didn't give up, Delia said sincerely. You're going to succeed, my dear. Thirty-three dollars. We've never had so much to spend before. Tonight we'll have fancy food. And pasta with mushrooms, Joe added. Where's the fork for the olives? On the following Saturday evening, Joe arrived home first. He spread out his eighteen dollars on the living room table and washed off what appeared to be a lot of dark paint from his hands. Half an hour later, Delia arrived home with her right hand wrapped in bandages. Joe asked, "What happened?" After they greeted each other, Delia chuckled, but not very happily. "It's because of Clementina," she explained. After her music lesson, she insisted on having chicken soup. She's a strange girl. Chicken soup at five in the afternoon. General Pinkney was there. You should have seen him hurry to get the cooking dish, Joe, as if there weren't any servants in the house. I know Clementina isn't well. She's so nervous. When serving the soup, she accidentally spilled a lot of it, burning hot, on my hand and wrist. It hurt a lot, Joe. But the sweet girl felt so bad about it. But General Pinkney, Joe, that old man almost went crazy. He rushed downstairs and sent someone. I heard it was the furnace man or someone in the basement to a drugstore for some oil and bandages. It doesn't hurt as much now. Joe gently touched Delia's hand and pulled at some soft material beneath the bandages. It's something soft, Delia said, with oil on it. Oh, Joe, did you sell another painting? She had spotted the money on the table. Did I? Joe replied, "Just ask the man from Peoria. He got his painting today, and he might want another cityscape and a view of the Hudson." What time did you burn your hand? Delhi, around five o'clock, I think. Delia said sadly. The soup, I mean, the chicken soup, was ready about that time. You should have seen General Pinkney, Joe. When? Sit down here for a moment, Delhi. Joe said. He pulled her to the couch, sat beside her, and put his arm around her. What have you been doing for the past two weeks, Delly? He asked. For a while, she hesitated with a loving yet determined look in her eyes. She murmured a few vague words about General Pinkney, but eventually lowered her head and confessed, tears in her eyes. I couldn't find any students, she admitted, and I didn't want you to give up your lessons. So I got a job ironing shirts at that big laundry on Twenty Fourth Street. I think I did pretty well making up stories about General Pinkney and Clementina. Don't you, Joe? And when a girl at the laundry accidentally burned my hand with a hot iron this afternoon, I made up the story about the chicken soup on my way home. You're not mad, are you, Joe? And if I hadn't found work, you might not have sold your paintings to that man from Peoria. 
He wasn't from Peoria, Joe said, slowly. Well, it doesn't matter where he was from. You're so clever, Joe. What made you suspect that I wasn't really teaching Clementina music? I didn't, Joe replied, until tonight. And I wouldn't have known, but I sent up some cotton and oil from the laundry's engine room this afternoon for a girl upstairs who burned her hand with an iron. I've been working as the laundry's engine operator for the past two weeks. So, you didn't sell your paintings, Delia asked. My buyer from Peoria, Joe said, and General Pinkme, both of them are products of the same storytelling art, but you can't really call it painting or music. Then they both laughed, and Joe started saying, when one loves one's art. But Delia stopped him by putting her hand on his lips. She said, no, just when one loves, 